So the next big choice in putting together a toolkit is your uh, rivet squeezer, your hand squeezer or pneumatic squeezer. So as the name implies, the one, uh, the hand squeezer operates by hand using a handle to apply the pressure uh, to the dimple dies to make the dimpled impression in the skins and also to set some of the rivets. Mainly you should think of both of these tools as a dimpling tool because you'll use them for dimpling much more than you'll use them for riveting but they also do set rivets. So the hand squeezer um, obviously takes a lot more effort at the end of the handles to do either of the operations, the dimpling or the squeezing of rivets, um, but you don't need air to run it. So you can do it without a compressor um, and it's much cheaper to get started if you wanna start with a cheaper tool and work your way um, into the toolkits. By contrast, the pneumatic squeezer is uh, much, more expensive, um, but it's also much easier to use. It's less fatigue. The tool itself weighs about twice what the hand squeezer weighs, um, but instead of putting the force at the end of the handles, your force is just applied to the thumb switch. And again, it's very controllable depending on how far you push your, the thumb switch, depends on how far the ram comes out. Now, both of these tools have adjustable rams. Our pneumatic squeezer comes with the adjustable ram where if you're shopping around at other tool companies most of them do not come with an adjustable ram. They come with a fixed ram and the adjustable ram is almost $100 to add to it. So there's a price difference there and, and a reason for it. Um, both of our adjustable rams you'll find um, that they're the only ones in the industry that have a 32 pitch thread and the reason for that is rivets come in 30 seconds of an inch. So one full revolution of either of these rams is a full rivet length. A half revolution is a half length. So those kind of nuances make our tools different than you'll find anywhere else. But both of them come with an adjustable, um, adjustable ram in the tool. And that's how you adjust for different lengths of rivets and different, um, and that's how you adjust for the uh, dimple dies to set it up. So let's look a little closer at the hand squeezer. One thing you'll notice about the hand squeezer is the, the handles open way up. Now one of our competitors likes to point that out, that this is how much room you need to use the hand squeezer, but that's not at all true. Um, if you watch what the ram does here, as you open it up, at this point here, all of a sudden it moves much faster. And that's just so that you can open it up and change the sets. So they're um, misleading you when it comes to the way that works. So the function of the squeezer is from here to here. So it does take a larger footprint than a pneumatic squeezer for sure. The head is the same, so you don't have any restrictions um, here, but you do have more restriction here. The other disadvantage of the hand squeezer is when you're using it, your, your hands are both on the handles and they're about a foot away from the work point. So you, you have the chance to apply a bit of torque if you're not careful um, as you're squeezing the dimple or squeezing the rivet here. Um, so that's a disadvantage of this tool. Some people find it helpful, including me, to kind of balance the tool up against them, um, hold their work up in here, and then you start your squeeze and then slide your hands back to complete the squeeze. So that's the hand squeezer. They both use the same pneumatic yokes, so you can always um, upgrade to a pneumatic later or have both and swap back and forth. There is no point in any kit that I know of that you have to have a hand squeezer. That is a, um, something that I hear uh, occasionally but is just not true. Um, we built our whole airplane with a pneumatic squeezer and it works well. So the pneumatic squeezer, obviously, I had, I had pointed out before, um, one of the advantages here is you can run it with one hand, you can have your other hand up on the work holding everything steady, and you can just apply as much force as you need, come up, stop it at the end of the rivet, or stop it before it dimples, make sure you're all lined up, and then go ahead and complete the force on the end of there. The disadvantage of uh, this tool is it only develops power in the last three sixteenths of an inch. So you do have to get the, the uh, 
adjustable RAM adjusted correctly or it'll come up and won't give you any power. So as long as you know that, it's easy to overcome, but it is a, it is a factor. So that's the pneumatic squeezer. If, um, what I always recommend to people is if you're going to do a quick build and going to um, like a builder center to do the tail, you know, sometimes people will go and they'll, they'll finish their, their class with a completed tail um, and then do a quick build. I would definitely use a hand squeezer for that because so much is already done on the quick build kits, the entire substructure. And that's what you really use it for is dimpling the substructure. If you're going to do an RV10 or an RV14, the tail cone comes with the empennage and usually that's not part of these classes. So you'll have to do the entire tail cone. Um, in that case, I would steer people more toward the pneumatic squeezer. If you're not going to do a quick build at all, you're going to build the whole airplane, and you're sure you're going to build the whole airplane, I always tell people to get the pneumatic squeezer. If you're not sure, if you want to just start out doing um, either the practice kits or just going to buy the tail um, on a shoestring budget, any of those things, then the hand squeezer is an option for you. So those are the differences, and if you have any other questions, please let me know.